India is now the largest democracy and the most populous country in the world. It is also the world's fastest growing economy. India has been economically, politically and culturally rich since time immemorial. Also, it is a fact that India has been the birthplace of spiritualism and the land of scientific inventions for thousands of years. Mark Twain, a famous American novelist, once said, India is the cradle of human race the birthplace of human speech, the mother of history, the grandmother of legend, and the great-grandmother of tradition. Our most valuable and most constructive materials in the history of man are preserved up in India only. So, India is such a rich and great country since thousands of years. India's glory was eulogized by many great people in the world. In this regard, one article has been written by Ramon Singh, which was published in a newspaper. In that article, Ramon Singh wrote that many people actually showed their respect for India for its culture, for its civilization, for its history, and for its scientific inventions. Now, Albert Einstein, all people, at least educated people in the world, know Albert Einstein who actually acknowledged India's contribution to world civilization. He said, quote, We owe a lot to the Indians who taught us how to count, without which no worldwide scientific discovery could have been made. So, Indian people made great scientific discoveries. One of them was the invention of zero, without which the world could not count. Right, unquote. Max Muller once said, if I were asked under what sky the human mind has most fully developed some of its choicest gifts, has most deeply pondered on the greatest problems of life and has found solutions. I should point to India. So, unquote. On the other hand, Henry Beveridge, in his famous book entitled A Comprehensive History of India, Civil, Military, and Social, from the first landing of the English to the suppression of Shipai revolt, including an outline 
of the early history of Hindustan, Volume One. The book was written in eighteen and sixty-seven. In the preface of the book, he wrote, "Quote, India, the most valuable dependency of the British Crown, is also one of the most interesting portion of the globe. Even some of its physical features are on a scale of unparalleled grandeur." The stupendous mountain chain along its northern frontier, rising gradually from a plain of inexhaustible fertility, has snowy summits that tower nearly six thousand feet above the loftiest of any other country. in either hemisphere while over the vast expanse of its magnificently diversified surface almost every product possessed of economical value grows indigenously or having been introduced is cultivated with success Unquote. So, this was the eulogies of some great men on this planet. Do you know the size of India in ancient times? India was a very vast country. in the asaj was changed from time to time under the sway of powerful dynasties it is learned from history that india was quote really a continent rather than a country it is populated by many races with different languages and religions its greatest length and breadth are roughly 2000 miles that is it is as large as europe with russia left out and 20 times the size of the british isles it has a population of 338 million people or nearly 10 times as many as england and 1/8 of that of the whole world half of the inhabitants of the british empire are hindus and good it was written by h g rawlinson in his famous book the title of the book is very well known to the scholars and he wrote that book in 1938 on the other hand another description from the book a comprehensive history of india civil military and social by henry beveridge 1867 in that book beveridge pointed out that quote india taken in its widest sense as a common name for all the contiguous territories of asia which are directly or indirectly subject to british rule lies between 8 degree and 37 degree north latitude and 66 degree 
and 99 degree east longitude. Without these limits, which extend north and south from the Himalayas to Cape Comorin and west and east from Afghanistan and Baluchistan to the Burman Empire. It covers an area of a million and a half of square miles and contains 180 million of inhabitants. There is another account of the vastness of India. M. Prathero and Satish Chandra Vidya Fushan in their 1915 book gave a description of India from the beginning of the 20th century. They pointed out that, quote, the area of India is 1,802 thousand six hundred and fifty seven miles of which one lakh ninety three thousand and seventy four square miles belong to the British rule or British India and nine hundred seven hundred and nine thousand 583 square miles to the native states. The total population according to the census of 1911 was 315 million 156,396 of which 200 and forty four million three hundred sixty seven and five forty two or seventy seven point five per cent belong to British India and seventeen million eight hundred eighty eight thousand eight hundred fifty four or 25% of the native states." Unquote. This vast area included today's Myanmar, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh.